All right, time for the long-awaited deal or no deal, my series where I review and basically give a recommendation on whether a budget or cheap product is worth it over the more expensive options out there. This is a great one. I've actually been getting a lot of questions about this wheel that I bought and have raced on a couple of times now, and I think I'm ready to, yeah, break it down. So this right here is a tri-spoke wheel that I bought from AliExpress. That is as generic Chinese carbon as you can get. It does not have any logos. It doesn't have brands. It is just an unlabeled carbon wheel. Now I know this sketches a lot of people out, but uh, I've ridden unbranded carbon wheels before. I've never had issues. I think if you know what you're looking for, uh, it's a safe thing to do. So let's be real, if a wheel is gonna fail, a logo printed on that wheel is not going to stop it from failing. Um, so what's up with this wheel? Why did I pick this one specifically? And would I recommend people get it in the future? Let's check it out. Let's maybe start first with the price. So this is at the time I got it, maybe $370 plus a little bit for shipping. Um, <laughs> That is way cheaper than anything you're gonna get from Vision or Revolver or anybody else who makes a tri-spoke like this. Um, is that a red flag for some people? Yeah, but is like I said, if you know what you're looking for quality-wise, then it doesn't, it doesn't concern me. There's nothing inherently that says more expensive is going to be safer or better or faster. Um, obviously there can be a correlation there, but, but not in the way that some uh, doomsayers would like to believe about Chinese components like this. So what are the reasons to get this wheel and what reasons maybe would you not want to run this wheel? Um, let's start with the reasons why you wouldn't want to or maybe you couldn't because there are fewer of those. Uh, spoiler for this video, this is gonna be a hard recommendation on the yay side. Um, but it is really, really wide as I talked about. That means some bikes will not have brake calibers capable of using this wheel because it is so wide. Now, if you're looking for a disc brake wheel, that's not a concern, so go crazy with it. They do have a disc brake version also, which has basically the exact same profile, uh, but with no brake track, so you're fine there. Um, but that could be a reason why this wheel is a non-starter for you. Uh, it is also very heavy, so I think, yeah, mine weighs out to 955 grams or so for just the rim and hubs, which is, I've, I mean, I've got a wheel, a front wheel from Princeton Carbon Works that weighs closer to 600 grams, so it, it's, yeah, it's, uh, if you're looking for a weight weenie build, if you are going to be racing Norseman or, or whatever and or Alpha West tri Triathlon this might not be the move for you but really as we know weight barely matters when it comes to triathlon and TT racing so that shouldn't be a big concern but it is something to be aware of 955 grams for the rim brake version wheel only or rim only rather that's that's pretty heavy as far as nice carbon wheels go okay let's go with the reason why this might not be your top choice for a wheel, the braking performance. Now, it is perfectly usable. It is just like many other carbon rims out there, um, which is to say, it's not gonna feel amazing if you're descending down a mountain in the rain, but otherwise, perfectly capable performance. So, um, that's never been a big concern for me. Now, I have used rims with nice textured brake tracks and they absolutely have better stopping performance this is a smooth brake track uh, no texture here it i stop perfectly fine on them it doesn't concern me at all for racing but if you are training in very hilly areas or you really really rely on kind of quick strong stopping power then this wheel might not be for you there are other bikes or other wheels and brands out there that have much nicer brake tracks than what you're getting on something like this i'm not worried about the brake track falling apart or failing or anything like that but you're just not getting quite the stopping performance you would get with something like head jet rims um, or or kind of 
or even my like raw and disc wheel has a much nicer brake track. So just keep that in mind. Now, all the reasons why maybe you should consider this wheel, it is a fantastic rim profile, great for modern wide tires. Um, because it measures so wide, I'm finally able to run a 25 millimeter front tire that inflates out to about 27 millimeters on that. Um, we'll look into that more specifically in a second, but uh, yeah, that basically enables me to get the rolling resistance benefits of a wider tire and not lose the aerodynamic advantages. Um, with disc wheels, this is becoming less and less a problem, but our disc brake wheels, but for rim brake wheels, it's still something to keep in mind because I've been having to run 23 millimeter tires uh, to keep the aero profile good. Now, there's no reason why I couldn't be running 25s earlier, but I am probably net losing out there aerodynamics wise, even when you consider the maybe slightly better rolling resistance I would be getting with the 25. So I love how wide this wheel is. It's got a very nice uh, no spoke hole uh, rim bed here, which is, I love it when wheel companies do that. This is tubeless compatible. I still don't run tubeless because it's a hassle and latex tubes are just as fast. But if you do run tubeless, then this is real convenient. You don't need rim tape or anything like that. Um, so big fan of that. And it just kind of makes it cleaner, easier to deal with. Um, it is still hooked. So this is not a modern hookless tubeless setup. Um, obviously I need a hooked setup because I still am running tubes. So that was a requirement for me. Um, now, I mean, let's talk about aerodynamics because there's no data out there. Not that I would trust data even if there was. I don't trust most companies' wheel data. Um, my general thought on a company, a wheel company publishing aerodynamics data is that it's good to compare wheels within their own brand, but it's not, you're never gonna get a fair comparison of say a flow versus zip versus head when one of those companies release the data. Even if they made an honest attempt, it's still, there's still a lot of variables with different testing and different wind tunnels. So data wouldn't necessarily help with this unless I were to take this into the wind tunnel myself and test it. Now that said, I am pretty sure it is not any slower than the wheels out there. And I'm actually pretty sure that it's faster than my shallower front wheels, which is what we'd expect. Um, but with a shape like this, a tri-spoke and with it being so wide, it does have the potential to interact with different forks and front ends in kind of beneficial or non-beneficial ways. So there's this uh, idea that you want a really wide fork maybe to take advantage of something like a tri-spoke um, because of the pressure kind of build up between the fork legs and the wheel. Uh, or you want a really narrow fork. So it's, it's hard to say, is my fork wide enough to take advantage of this? Or is it, you know, just in between and is it actually slowing me down every time these big fat spokes go through my fork legs? Um, eventually I would love to do some testing and see how this kind of lines up, but I, I really, uh, I have no doubts that this is the fastest front wheel that I own right now. And that's not saying a whole lot because I don't have a whole lot of uh, really deep, kind of really well-respected front wheels, but uh, I, it's, it's hard to believe that this would be significantly slower than anything I could buy. So general build, quality and quality of life things, it feels very, very solid. There's no kind of flex in the, the rim profile as I squeeze it. Uh, it feels very sturdy and, and you'd expect that with how much it weighs. Um, the, the, the hub spins great. Um, you know, at some point I'll probably need to address those bearings or replace them in there, but I've had no issue with kind of the feel. It feels perfectly smooth and, um, it's just as good as anything that I own, uh, hub wise. So yeah, I mean, when I got this, I have absolutely no hesitations about anything structurally falling apart. It is probably on the sturdier side of any wheel that I've owned. Um, partially maybe these manufacturers know what their reputation is and they're gonna err on the side of more layers of carbon or whatever it is. I don't know, that's just me speculating, but I've got no hesitations about uh, the, the 
build quality or any of the structural parts of this wheel. I'll mount up a tire in a tube and we'll take some measurements, see what a 25 millimeter tire inflates out to. Uh, and we can see how easy a tire mounts on here given the tire I'm gonna use is, uh, it's already been on here, I just popped it off for this video and to get measurements. Um, so it's not a brand new tire, but it's, it's quite easy to mount. It, it stays on nicely, it looks really good. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm a huge fan of this wheel. I can't imagine there are many races where I will opt for something different. Maybe, maybe something like St. George with a ton of climbing. And if I can save three, 400 grams in just my front wheel. Um, but you know, the crosswinds don't scare me on this. I've ridden this in some races where I've got some decent crosswinds and I've never felt any less in control than I have with any other wheel. So maybe for a lighter rider, you know, I'm on the bigger side, I'm 170 pounds, uh, usually when I'm racing. So maybe a smaller person would feel the effects of this more, but I can't say that I have noticed any difference between this and my shallower Princeton Carbon Works front wheel. All right, got my trusty digital caliper. This is not the fanciest one ever, but I'm gonna zero it. It's gonna get it close enough. So first, let's check out the brake track width here. Um, probably could have done this without the tire. Actually, I can't really get the brake track width. Uh, yeah, I can. Okay, so the, the tips of the calipers are there. In the middle of the brake track, I'm measuring 28.45. So we'll call it 28 and a half millimeters. That is really, really wide, as I discussed. Very wide for a rim brake. Um, the wheel itself gets even wider. So the widest point of the actual rim is showing, that's upside down, but what does that say? 31.18. Crazy. Uh, that, is, that is as wide as any aerodynamic disc brake wheel gets, and we're still talking rim here. So last measurement, let's just get what the tire is. This is a 25 millimeter Michelin Power TT, my tire of choice, and this is going to inflate out to whatever we got here, which is uh, about 28 and a half, a little under. So while that is about the same width of the brake as the brake track, the it is still narrower than the widest point of the wheel, which is the measurement that probably matters the most for aerodynamics. So this setup right here is a very fast front wheel setup. It's got one of the fastest tires available. It's got the fastest tube available and it is likely a very fast wheel. All right, so in conclusion, would I recommend this wheel 100%? Uh, sure, there are some downsides, like buying directly off a Chinese website, waiting for shipping, uh, potential hassles with no customer service if needed, but for the price that you are paying, this feels unbeatable as far as aerodynamics and a quality front fast race wheel. Um, like I said, I have just no issues racing hard on this wheel. Um, it, it, it feels as good as anything I've ridden. And it's, I mean, it looks sweet, right? Which is also a big aspect of, of how we choose our gear for, for racing triathlon. So always happy to answer questions about this wheel or tires or whatever it is. Feel free to reach out on Instagram or leave a comment. And uh, yeah, have a great day.